Welcome to Helping Hosts Max Their Shows. My name is Lisa Noto, and this is my co-presenter, partner in crime, and dear friend, Michael Yokley. We'll get to a little bit more of a formal introduction in just a few minutes, but we're going to do a fun little uh, exercise for you to put a metaphor in your mind about how host coaching really should be. And this is a great team meeting exercise. So if you are a director that leads a team meeting, you know, maybe you want to videotape this or take notes or whatever, please don't get my bad side. Put me on YouTube. Tag me. I don't want any of my friends at home to see this. Okay. So we have a prearranged volunteer. Kelly, would you like to come up? Okay. So what Kelly is going to be doing is she's going to be playing the part of a host. And how many of you remember the old pastime game, Pin the Tail on the Donkey? Right? So this is a little bit different spin on this, but the idea is I'm going to be blindfolding Kelly, who is the host, the Pamper Chef host. I'm going to be giving her her shopping spree that she would earn for a $1,000 show, which is how much? How much for a $1,000 shopping spree? $1,000 show. $215. i am giving you $300. Okay? Because they don't make $15 bills like that. <laughs> Michael is holding the bag. And it's Kelly's job without anybody's help. She can't touch him. She can't ask for help. She's going to be blindfolded. She has to get the shopping, the money in the shopping bag. And when she does, she gets her shopping spree. All right, are we ready? You can't, he's very handsome, but you can't touch him. Can't touch the bag. You're just going to walk and drop it when you think you're right over the bag. Go. Okay, take off your blindfold. Okay, come back. Was it hard to get it right in the bag without any help? Okay. So now, you still have some money left in your hand. Now, you're going to do it with a coach. Who would you like to have you be your coach? Debbie? Debbie? Where's Debbie? There's probably 43 Debbies in here. <laughs> come on up, Debbie. Now, she's going to put that blindfold back on, but she's not going to make a move until you tell her exactly what to do step by step until that money's in the bag. Again, she cannot touch Michael. She cannot touch the bag. Okay? But she can't do anything until, unless you coach her into getting it into the bag. Ready? Okay, stop, reach out, yep, that's it, drop, reach out, drop. Thank you, ladies. Now, isn't that a cute metaphor? She was on her own the first time, she, she didn't get it in. And you know what, in all fairness, Michael did move, but does the host every, ever do everything we tell them? They move around. They move around in their decision making. So, with a coach, she got the money in the bag and she earned the shopping suite. Does anybody not understand that metaphor? That is a metaphor, right? Because my daughter tells me I use the wrong words for the wrong things. <laughs> okay, so my name is Lisa Noto. I'm an advanced director from New York. Um, I'm very passionate about host coaching. I have $1.4 million in personal sales right now, and I've, I've had the luxury of being on every t trip and earned excellence awards. And the reason why I say that is not to boast or brag, but to let you know that if you're sitting in this class and you need help with host coaching, the two of us are going to nip that in the bud today. You're going to be so excited when you get home. I call this my superhero cape. It's your apron, but when you swing it around back, it becomes a cape. And you're going to be a host coaching superhero. Everybody ready for that? Okay. Does anybody not have a smartphone or a way to record? You don't have a smartphone, so you want to friend somebody right now that has one. They could email you something, I don't know. But I don't want everybody feverishly catching every single word, writing, writing, writing. What you're going to be able to do today is you're going to be able to photograph things with your phone 
or audio tape what we're saying. You don't really need to videotape it. That's going to make me self-conscious. She's videotaping. Um, but whatever we say that you want to duplicate and take those words, it's best for you to catch it either through a photograph or through audio. Everybody good? Because if we stop to, to repeat every single word, we'll be here through lunch. And if we are here through lunch, we'll order in Chinese. Okay, so welcome to our class, Helping Hosts Max Their Shows. Um, I wasn't always very good at this subject. I was very timid when it came to asking my host to send all 40 invites. I would graze over the area of outside orders and I would be terrified to offer the host the opportunity. Anybody with me on that one? Okay, we all do it out of fear. We don't wanna, we don't wanna ask questions because we sometimes don't wanna hear the answers. Would that be fair to say? Okay, so when I started to think about how I could improve my shows, I thought about the last really fun wedding I was at or great birthday party, and I thought to myself, did that event have a planner? Did that event have someone guiding the customer on how to have a great party, a great wedding, what to do, what to expect, who to invite, how many to have, and that kind of thing. They weren't on their own. So I thought, okay, well, we're not throwing a wedding, but we are still helping someone have a great end result to something they're about to host in their home. Right? Okay. A little bit of logistics to get out of the way before we share the actual words. This is how it starts. When I book a show, I send a postcard that I have made on staples.com. And I'm going to send some around the room. So you can take a picture of the front and the back. When I made these, I made these as a Christmas present to my business. I went to staples.com. I got 500 of them for $50. Now, ladies, the last time you spent $50 on a pair of shoes, you wore it twice, went in the back of your closet. I would justify the cost of these cards because they're very professional looking. And on the front, it has my return address and it has free offer with qualifying purchase, yada, yada. You'll see all the information. It'll have to get around to everyone in the room. So if you take it and take a picture, please pass them. This goes in the mail, a professional card. In the host packet, I give, depending on my stock, one to two catalogs. If I have an abundance, I give two. If I'm short, I give one. I put the host planner in there. I put a package of invitations and an opportunity brochure. Now, who can guess what I've left out of that packet? Order forms and, no, I said the planner. Monthly special? I've deliberately left those out and I'll tell you why. I ask each and every host, do you have the ability to print from home or office? And when they tell me yes, I say, fabulous. If I send you an easy to follow outside order form and the monthly specials, can you print? Sure. That just saves me some copying. Okay, and if they don't have a way to print, obviously I have something on hand to be able to mail them. So I don't put the copies in. On the actual package of invitations, I put a picture of a stop sign on a label. Now, how many of you have ever put together a piece of furniture? Are you still married? <laughs> we all think we can do it, not looking at the instructions, and then we hit that one sheet that says, stop, before you do anything, read this. And that's kind of what that label is on the package of postcard invitations. It says, it has a stop sign, and then I put on there, you know, I print them up ahead of time, please send all 40 invites to ensure our show's success, a third will actually show up. And that just goes on every package of invitations. So if they don't hear me, they don't read my text, they don't listen to what I'm saying, they have to stop and look at that. It's just a different kind of reminder, okay? I print the labels for their postcards. If you ask me to host a show with you and ask me to handwrite all the party information on the left-hand side, I would cancel my show. Where I come from, can anybody guess? We're very impatient. We invented busy. I couldn't have the attention span to fill all 40 out. So where can we find the company label, the company template that they give us? It's online. Does anybody not know that there's a template online under Consultants Corner? You go into the search box and you type in mini catalog invitation label. And you'll get a very nice template that Pampered Chef has made for us. I take it one step further, and when, you, when I pass these around, you will see. I have a label program at home. I'm very low tech. Don't be impressed when you see it. But I make my own label because I want to put my picture on it. 
and I want the monthly special on it and any other theme that I may be giving the show. And my themes usually are you show up and buy and I'll entertain you. It's my theme. No. But I put my picture on here because a real estate agent taught me a long time ago that when the name and the face are associated with one another, it makes you real. It makes you a real person. And as you build your reputation and people get to know you and they see your face on their invitation, they're going to say, oh, I love her. I'm going to go. Or I love him. I'm going to go. Does everybody get that part? I put the monthly special on there because the guests, when they receive their postcard, if they can't attend, they're going to want to order online. I usually put the picture of the guest special, but this year it's a lot of peelers this month, so I didn't want to waste my ink. Um, but you'll see it when it comes around. So I provide them with 40 labels for the postcards for the left-hand side. It's their job to address them and stamp them. I do not send out the invitations for my hosts. I do not. 17 and a half years, I do not send the invitations because I don't want my job to be harder. But I like their job to be easier, and that's why I provide them with the labels. Everybody okay with that? Okay. The next thing that goes out in the mail, and this is probably the most important thing I will teach you today. I hear more feedback about this little step from kind people that stop me or email me. This is something that I created a while back called the guilt letter. Anybody familiar with it? Oh, good. Strap yourselves in. Your life is about to change. This has to be on a note card that you can get from the dollar store, eight for a dollar. This has to be handwritten. If you leave here and you text this, type this, whatever, it's not going to have the same effect. It has to be handwritten. I write them up dozens at a time when I'm waiting in a doctor's office, when I'm sitting watching TV, morning coffee, whenever I can get some time, I sit and write at least a dozen at a time. They all say the exact same thing, okay? It goes something like this. Thank you so, and don't, you don't have to write this. You're gonna, everybody got their thing on? Thank you so much for booking with me. The best way that I can show my appreciation is to help you have an end result you'll be thrilled with. I want your guests to have a fantastic time and I want you to earn a huge shopping spree. I also wanted to let you know that your show, underline your show, will actually be qualifying me toward our next incentive trip to Atlantis. How cool are you? Your name is very popular in my home right now, smiley face. Looking forward to our time together. I will be in touch soon. You have to remember what this implies. You open up your mailbox. There's something in it with your name on it. You open up the envelope, and there's a card inside. Right away, a woman says she had to get in the car and go buy this card. There's handwriting. She had to stop and write this. Right? Busy, busy people actually, you know, think about this. She had to actually put it in an envelope, go to the post office and get a stamp and mail it. It implies I care. And people like to do business with people that care. So when you go to your mailbox, when you get home, and the bills are in there, and the circulars are in there, and the magazines are in there, but there's a card from someone with handwriting, your host is going to open this first. Again, every single card says the exact same thing. I've been doing this for 15 out of the 17 years I've been with the company. Do I do it every single show, every single month? No. I get complacent, I get cocky, I think, oh, I don't have to do it this month. And then what do you think happens? They go to their mailbox all sad because they know their friend got a letter last month. <laughs> Could have passed that around. I cannot stress to you enough the importance that it's handwritten. I've had people, no matter how many times I've said it, say, I could text it because it's texting. You know, I don't text it, I don't email it, it's not the same thing. You want to know you want your host to feel that personalization. All right, anybody? Good? I love that question. I love that question. What if you have the same host, you know, more than one host get the exact same letter and they know one another? Well, does every show that we do all year long qualify us toward an incentive trip? Oh, my show's qualifying her too!
I'm not that lucky. She's saying when the same host hosts twice in the same year. I'll let you know when that happens. I guess I would, you know, reward. If you're fortunate enough to have two hosts, two, two shows in the same year with the same person, then I guess you have to change it up a little. All right? The guilt letter, and I don't care how t high tech the world gets and how fast we get and how, how phenomenal technology is, I don't care what age we are, I don't care what gender we are, I don't care where we live, when it's personalized and it makes the person feel like a million bucks, that to me has more of an impact than a fancy red stamp or, or any kind of te you know, email. And I, and I used to think it was you know, age discriminatory. I would think, you know, I'm 50 now. What, she's 50? Yup, I know I don't look it. But I used to think it was something eight, like the younger girls, they're not into the handwriting thing, they're into it. Anybody here 20 or 25 years old? Are you still affected by a handwritten note by a friend? Say it louder. There you go. Okay. So now let's get to the sticky part, the host coaching. Now, you should ask your host what is their preferred method of contact because that's the most likely way, the way they'll reach out to you, right? But they need to hear the sound of your voice, whether that's at the show you met them at or you allow them, you, they allow you to speak to them for at least three minutes. So let's say we booked over the phone and, you heard, and they heard my enthusiasm. The first host coaching call doesn't have to be over the phone if she doesn't want it to be. Let's say I booked someone through online. It was a home office lead. They emailed me. I don't, I don't want to call them. They don't want to call me. It's all technology. They, don't, they can't hear my excitement. So if it's, if it's booked through technology, ask them, would it be all right if we have a quick three-minute phone call and then we will continue using the preferred method of your choice? Because they need to hear your enthusiasm at least once, whether that's at the show, on the phone, they need to hear the excitement. After that, if you want to text or email or Facebook or whatever to host coach the rest of the way, that's fine. Whatever method you choose, you must be thorough. Now, let's get over the fear. We know more than them. I don't care if there's a consultant in this room that's only done one show. You will know more than them. It is our job to come into their home and make them look like a million bucks. And when they know that you have that intention to make them look that good, they're almost afraid to not jump through the hoop, right? Because you're impressing them by caring. So the easy parts are the hosts that send out all 40. The easy part is the host that wants to collect the outside orders. And the easy host is the one that tells you, I'd like to join your team. We all know how to react. If all three of those go that right on the first call, you're going to temporarily go blind. <laughs> you're gonna be so excited, you won't be able to see straight, okay? But I wanna get into the dirty stuff today. What happens when they don't wanna send the 40? What happens when they feel like their house, is, their house is too small or they don't know enough people? What happens when you offer the opportunity and it is the most awful, off-putting, rejected answer you could ever hear? That's the part you want help with, right? Okay. So when I do my first ho coaching call, if I have to do it over the phone, I will ask one question. Before we get started, I just need to know, are you comfortable having about 15 guests in your home for our demo? That's the most important question to me because the way they react is going to tell me how I'm gonna handle the rest of it. So what's the favorite answer that we get? Yes. yes. That is going to be the best host. We know that, that's the easy one. So I would say, great, I have a formula that's gonna get us to that number with ease. Would you like to know what it is? That's what I say to my host. When you send out all 40 of the invitations I provided, less than half are actually going to show up. How do you feel about filling out all 40 postcards? The host says, yes, great. You're gonna be in my hostess hall of fame. Go get your hair done, take a picture. I'm gonna be on my wall. Pay her a compliment, pay him a compliment. That's the easy part. But what if they say, no, I'm really not comfortable? What's one of the reasons why a host would be uncomfortable having 15? Kitchen's too small. The home is too small. 
Now, I do come from an area, and I do have the type of personality that can pull this off. I say to them, this is the only time size really isn't going to matter. <laughs> but before I say that, I really, any, any objection or obstacle that they feel is in their way, this is how I really do start out. I will say to them, I'm so glad that you shared that with me because you're certainly not the first. I validate whatever's going on because no one wants to feel like they're the problem. And I, I'm, I always feel like, I, don't, I, don't, I never want to feel like I'm the problem with my own friends and my roommates and my, I want to feel like, oh, that's happened to you too? Right, don't you feel better when that, okay. So when I get, a val when I get an objection, I'm so glad that you shared that with me because you're certainly not the first. Would you like to hear what others have done in your same situation? That is a blanket response to any objection. So if you said to me, I would love to send out all 40 postcards, but I don't know enough people. I don't have that many friends, right? Say that to me. I'd love to send out all 40 postcards, but I don't know enough people. I don't have that many friends. Sounded like last Thursday's host. <laughs> I would say, Emily, I am so glad that you shared that with me because you're certainly not the first host to be able to tell me that. Would you like to hear what others have done? Okay. Pitch and tone of your voice are key. Emily, you know what? You're not the first one to tell me you couldn't send 40. I don't know. Can I tell you what you need to do? Does that sound right? No. Emily, I'm so glad you shared that with me because you're certainly not the first person. But would you like to hear what others have done? And then I take them through, how many postcards do you think you could fill out? I don't know, 20, 25? Okay. Why don't you try to get to the 40? And if you can't, I want you to call me tomorrow with whatever number you stopped at. Because you know what? You may get to the 40, even though you think you can't. You may get there. We won't even have to go through all this. But I want you to call me tomorrow and let me know how many cards you have left. And then would it be all right if I shared some ideas with you? Emily? Okay. <laughs> Emily? Emily? Um, and these are my ideas for filling out other postcards. I will say to my host, who on your list of invited guests are you the closest with? Who's your BFF? Family? Friends? Lucky you. <laughs> who, who on your list of invited guests are you closest with? Friends. Give me a person. Oh, <laughs> Ashley. Ashley. If someone says my sister, my mother-in-law, my neighbor, my grandmother, I would say, oh, what's your grandmother's name? Emily. How would Emily feel if you asked her to send out the rest of the invitations? What do you think her reaction would be? I don't know. She probably would do it. Well, how long do you need to reach out to Emily and ask her if she's a you know, good for this. Okay, if Emily says no, who's the next person on your list that you're the closest with? Probably my sister, not my sister. <laughs> What's your sister's name? Laura. Okay, so if Emily says no, how do you think Laura might react? Oh, Laura would definitely do it. She's always having parties. Okay, so in 24 hours, two hours, how long do you think it'll take for you to reach out to these two ladies to see if they're game? And then I do the trickiest thing of all. I'll say, you didn't hear it from me, but the people that co-host, they have even better shows. I'm never going to say it in public. I'm not going to say it in front of anybody else. I'm just telling you right now, the people that co-host have more dynamic shows than those who don't. I'm so full of it. You don't even know I'm full of it when I'm saying it, but I want them to be like, I want to have a good show. I want to have a better show. And that's the, remember Rory said it's the implication of what's put in your mind, what you're thinking about? Who was in Rory Vaden last today? Wow. Oh, no wonder everybody's looking at me weird. Okay. Where was I? Hi, my name is Lisa. <laughs> okay. So if the house is too small, I'm so glad that you shared that with me because you're certainly not the first host to think that way. Can I tell you about my other experiences with the same type of host? It really doesn't matter. Size really doesn't matter. 
And I might get them thinking about the last holiday they hosted or the last birthday party. You know, from, from New York being Italian, you ask another Italian person, did you ever host a holiday? Yeah, I had 30 of my ungrateful relatives here for Christmas. <laughs> Was it a sit down? Yeah, everybody had a seat. Well, this is a little different. We really only need half of those people and we don't need to sit them down for a formal meal. So you see where you can jog their memory? Worst case scenario, if the host can only send out 25 invites, but you've gone through every possible way that they could send out more, if 25 is it, well then that's gonna be the best darn show that that host is ever gonna have, right? We would get mad when three people show up, but why are we mad at them? They showed, right? They get the show, okay. So this is how the first host coaching call goes all in a row. What's your name? I'm gonna forget this in 30 seconds, turn it over. Okay, so Lori, before we get started planning your show, I have one question. Are you comfortable having about 15 guests in your home for our demo? Yes, you're gonna be in my host is all of fame. I have the easiest way for you to get 15 in your home. Would you like to know the formula? Okay, I gave you 40 invitations in your host packet. When you send out all 40, less than half are going to actually show up. And that is different than what you get in the yes and no response categories. 15 will show. You okay with that? You'd like more. Mm. Told you they were gonna come up with stuff. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll you, you fill out the 40 and then we'll go from there, okay. The next thing I wanna talk to you about are the outside orders. Now, are you able to print from home? Great, I'm gonna send you an easy to follow order form. You only need to print page one. And you're gonna have the monthly and guest, host and guest specials as well. But you're gonna print out as much of you, as you need. When you have at least five outside orders before the show, it's gonna dramatically increase the amount of free product you get to choose for yourself. Dramatically. I don't think I've ever closed a show with less than five. If you wanna go for more, great. But five, is what everybody does. It's gonna dramatically increase your show total. All right? Okay, you can use my website. It's printed on the materials. You can, you, you can pass the catalog, old fashioned style, however you wanna do it, and don't eliminate anybody out of town because we have great direct shift options. Do you have any questions about collecting orders? Great. The last thing that I wanna ask you, and it may be the furthest thing from your mind, did you ever consider doing what I do? No, you haven't really thought of it. Well, the reason why I bring it up is because it's actually part of your host benefit package to start with an advantage over anyone else. And I don't know, Lori, but from what I saw in you the other night at Mary's house, my company would kill to have you. I saw everyone come and say hello to you. You were raving about the products. You're adorable. Sometimes adorable is a stretch. <laughs> the reason why you said no, is that no never or no not now? No not now. Okay. So it's something we could possibly just, you know, visit. Okay, so I gave you some information in your host packet. What I want you to do for right now is just take a look at it and write down any questions you may have. Would that be all right? Now, Lori, I'm gonna ask you at least two more times before we close your show if I would be able to have the honor of having you on my team. So if I feel like I'm, ask, if you feel like I'm asking you a lot, it's part of my job to make sure that you have all the information you need to decide whether or not you need to be on my team. Okay, now, let's stop for a second. The reason why you bring up the opportunity is it's part of the host benefit package. You would never go into your show and not tell about the free. You would never go to your show and not bring the product and not do the recipe, right? We may forget about the host special, but we usually remember in time. But we deliberately leave out the kit credit because we're afraid. So the minute you're not afraid to hear no is the minute you will start asking every single host. So she gave me the most off-putting no. It would be, you know what? The reason why I ask is it's actually part of your host benefit package to start with an advantage over others. I would never leave that out. Okay? Okay. The
The second phone call is a few days later. Hey, Lori, just checking back to see if you were able to send out your invitations. Or you can text this. Just checking to see if you sent out your invitations. They text back, yes, I did, and you would reply with? Do you need more? <laughs> if I said, did you send out your invitations, and they said yes, would that make you happy? That doesn't make me happy. Why not? I want to know how many she sent or he sent. Oh my goodness, I'm so proud of you. How many were you able to get out? And I want the number. Because if she sent all of them, she's going to tell me what number. That means she counted them. I sent out 26. Now I said, did you send out your invitations? They said yes, but that didn't mean 40. How many were you able to send? 26. Okay, wonderful start. What made you stop at that number? You compliment the effort. Even if they sent 11, great, wonderful start. What made you stop at 11? The only time I don't you know, nudge is if there, it was 38 or more sent. So if they sent 22, 27, 34, wonderful start. What made you stop at that number? I'm going to deal with that host's scenario. I'm not just going to be all over the planet with it. OK? I will check back again to find out how many more. When I'm at a dead end, I'm at a dead end. But I won't stop until I know that I'm at that dead end. I don't speak to the host again until two days before the show. And I do this via email. I will email them the recipe choices. My first 450 shows, I did focaccia bread and apple crisp like my fearless leaders taught me. I never changed my recipes. But now I can. So if you offer a few things, I will send my recipe choices. They can only pick from that. If they respond back with something that's not on the list, they're not getting it. They're not. Because it will affect your show. So if you're walking into someone's house going, why in the world did I tell her I would make this thing because I don't even know what I'm doing. My family doesn't like it. I, I, oh, I forgot to tell the tomatoes. How many of you have done that? If you really mean no, then it's no. I email the recipe ingredients. I don't get directions from the show. I use my GPS, whatever. But that's it. Oh, one more thing. In the host coaching, a lot of people say to me, oh, what if they say I want to invite through Facebook? Isn't that adorable? If you want to address the elephant in the room on that first call, say, are you tempted to go to Facebook and invite? Yeah, it's easier. Well, that's really you know, a wonderful way, but can I tell you what has happened to hosts that have gone that route? Well, yeah, what happened to hosts that did that? Disaster. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you why. If you threw your husband a surprise birthday party, would you do it through Facebook? No. You get that? No. If you threw your sister a bridal shower, would you do it through Facebook? No. Then why would you do this through Facebook? It's a personal invitation. It takes zero effort to put someone's name in a distribution list. And we know it. Zero effort. Delete, delete, delete. Oh, I didn't get it. I log on once a week. If it's in the mailbox, if it's handwritten, if it's got, you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay? So don't be afraid to raise the idea of Facebook can help and hurt. If they say, I only know th people through Facebook, that's the only way I can invite them. I really can't believe that people don't, can't put two, to, two together on this subject, but how about we private message them for their address? Really? They need me to say this, but... So you can use Facebook for that. You can use it for a reminder. You could use it to attract outside orders, but don't let them do it in lieu of the postcards. And there's so many different you know, variations on this. There's so many different opinions on this. But 17 and a half years, a million four in sales, I believe in the postcard or the mini catalog. Okay? My time is up almost, right? When you fill out your surveys later, please remember that extraordinary is one word. Mr. Michael Yokley, change their worlds.
She's a tough act to follow. <laughs> All right, so I started my business in 2008. Um, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about myself. Again, not to brag, just try to give you a, a little perspective on why uh, they asked us to, to teach this workshop. I have over $700,000 in career sales. Uh, my key to success is two shows a week in addition to a full-time career. I also am the chief financial officer of a third of a billion dollar state agency. And I support, you know, an advanced team. So, Lisa covered a lot of things. I'm gonna try not to duplicate too many of those, those things because I do things slightly different than she does. And I just wanna help you all um, lead and coach your host to a successful show. Our goal is for each of you to walk away from here with concrete ideas, specific examples, and a system to ensure that you are successfully coaching your hosts. So we're gonna talk about my vision of host coaching, what our goals are when we host coach, what I put in my packet, it's different from Lisa, when my opportunities, when I take opportunities to host coach, and again, a, a concrete example of my first call. So, before, um, before I start my part, I wanna do a little bit of an attitude check. So how many of you have ever thought that your hosts were doing you a favor by hosting a show? Yeah. It's a common thought, you know? But I want you to maybe think about it this way. The cooking show is truly a valuable experience. We have terrific money-saving recipe ideas. We come in, we prepare some tasty food that their friends get to a sample. We give them really informative tips for preparing meals and food prep and serving. Then at the end, your host walks away with a shopping spree of $200 worth of products five half-priced items, there's always a great host special, an unlimited discount, we give them 10% off for a year, and a 50% off item at each one of the shows that we, you book off of her show. So is she doing you a favor, or are you doing her a favor? So um, I think that a lot of us are afraid of being bossy, Anybody ever think that they're gonna be bossy or pushy when you talk to your hosts? I wanna help you move past that because we're not being bossy, we're not being pushy, we are coaching. We are the professionals and as Lisa said, we know more than they do. It's not her job to know how to have a successful job or have a successful party, that's our job and we are the ones that can lead them to a successful result. If we don't do our job, she's not going to have a successful show. And let's face it, happy hosts, what do they do? They refer us. They repeat host with us. The best way to ensure that your host is delighted is to provide that strong host coaching. It means working with your host, building your relationship with your host, and aiming towards a goal that is going to benefit both of you. So, I wanna give you a quick example of what host coaching is not. Ring, ring, ring. Hi Lisa, this is Michael with The Pampered Chef. Did you get your host packet? Yep, oh, great. Did you read it? Oh, great, any questions? I'll check with you a couple days before the show to see how many people you got coming. Thanks. <laughs> what? All right, so the problem is, is we think we're, we're taking up too much of their time or they don't have time to talk to us or we're gonna come across as bossy or pushy. And again, let's move past that and realize that if we give them the support that they need, they're gonna walk away with a lot of stuff. They're gonna have a good time because they had a house full of people. So real host coaching, in my opinion, consists of four things. Building that relationship with your host. Preparing and offering her tips and guidance. Lisa just gave you guys some perfect words to use when you um, come across any objections from your hosts. We're here to motivate our hosts 
and most importantly, we need to follow up with our host as we progress towards her show. So let's get them excited, let's keep them motivated, and make sure that your host feels confident that she's doing the right thing. She's doing what every successful host does. So everything that you discuss during the host coaching process supports um, our goal and revolves around three principles, in my opinion, of a successful show. Number one is to get people to the show. It's the only way, right? We need her inviting people, reminding people, getting excited about it and telling them about it. She's got to collect outside orders. Lisa talked a little bit about that. And then we're going to get her future discounts from those shows that are booked off of hers. Those are my three goals when I go into a host coaching call. Every single thing that I do revolves around those. And I know if I can get them focused on those things and how they're going to achieve a successful show, that it's going to be, again, successful for both of us. It's not only our job to tell them what to do, but why we want them to do it. One part is, of course, creating our host packet. I like my host packet to be, to be very easy, simple, organized. It's got to arrive on time, but I always keep it simple, sweetie. I know there's another way to say that, but I don't really like it. Um, I will tell you that I use predominantly only home office materials. I have not made a bunch of fancy flyers. I don't have a bunch of cr colorful postcards I've invented. The home office pays people thousands of dollars to invent these things for us, and they're beautiful. We should use them. Um, so the other thing is those materials do not have a voice. They cannot speak to your host. Only you can speak to your host and give those materials a voice. I organize my packet in a two pocket folder. It's very simple. Whoever has those folders on sale for the cheapest. In the right hand pocket, I have two catalogs, six outside order forms, a flyer on how to take orders and figuring totals, the host uh, bonus, and the guest special flyer. On the left-hand side, I've, of course, got our party planner, a join us brochure. I have um, my business card in there. And then I do have a simple host coaching letter and one more catalog. That's the catalog she's going to use for her wish list. That's all the th that I think that my host needs to have a successful show and plan and execute her party. So when you contact your host and go over all of this information, you're going to be able to bring that voice to those materials. Um, the other thing is, it's not their job to contact you. It's our job to contact them. When you, I leave a voice message for my host and I do not reach her, I never tell my host she has to call me back. Now, she's welcome to call me back, and I, of course, leave my phone number, but it might be something like this. Hey, Lisa, it's Michael with The Pampered Chef. I was just calling to go over your host packet. Um, you should have it by now. You can give me a call back at 217-415-7596, or I'll be calling you back in the next 24 to 48 hours again to see if we can go over that packet. So I've just given my, myself permission that I'm going to call her again the next time I make those calls. I always make sure that I try and have them in their hands at least three and a half weeks prior to their show. If you're booking in close, of course, you may be taking those packets with you, and that's, that's fine. Um, but I'm just, what I'm telling you is, is we need that much time normally to plan and execute a successful show. All right, here's some opportunities that you have to make your, to make your host coaching happen. Um, when you book your show, if you're handing them a packet and you have the opportunity to do so, you can have your first host coaching call right then and there. It's going to be very effective in person, too. She's going to feel that excitement that you have for your show. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're six people deep wanting to place their order, you can do one of two things. You can say, do you have a couple minutes to hang around? I'm going to go ahead and wrap up some more orders, but I'd love to go over some of these materials in the packet. Yes or no? She may say, nope, I got to go. Great. When can we have our first conversation about your party? And set your appointment, schedule it, it's done. It's in your calendar and her calendar. And guess what? It makes making that call a lot easier. 
you've already set up the appointment. All right, within 24 hours of booking the show is an excellent opportunity to confirm the show, it makes it rock solid, cements it on your calendar when you follow up. When you make that follow-up confirmation call, if you've handed her a packet, you can do your, host, your first host coaching call right then and there. I send all of my packets priority mail, so I have a tracking number and I know exactly when they get it. So it's an ideal time, again, I've given myself an opportunity to call and say, hey, it's Michael with the Pampered Chef. I saw through my tracking that you received your packet today. Do you have a couple minutes to go over it? Call quickly because then it, you, there's no time for her to lose that packet, misplace it or anything, you know, because it happens. Um, and then, of course, you're going to continue your host coaching in the days leading up to the show. Um, I even believe that host coaching extends at the show and beyond. Uh, because you're always, again, working towards that goal of outside orders, and you can continue to coach those even after, even at and after the show. We're going to role play the first call that I make with my host. Um, I'm going to use Lisa as my, as my host. The, my first call is always the longest, and I will admit to you that it takes about 10 minutes. Um, with the interaction, today it's not going to take 10 minutes, but... Um, that's my longest call and it's the best investment I can make in that show is to spend 10, okay, I'll admit it, sometimes they're 20 minutes, but that's just because I'm chatty and friendly, okay? <laughs> but um, 10, you know, 10 minutes on my calendar with my host is gonna pay me back tenfold. All right, so. I'm not gonna look at Lisa because I do most, I'll admit I do most of my coaching over the phone. And this is gonna feel a lot more like a phone conversation if I'm not looking at her. Um, I use a headset. <laughs> All right. I also host, I, I do this first call and I've got it up here right now. I do this with a party planner in my hand because then you'll never miss any of the things that you need to make sure that you go over with her. So, ring, ring, ring. Hello? Lisa? Yes, who's this? Hey, it's Michael with The Pampered Chef. Hey, Michael. How are you? I'm good, how about you? I'm great. Did you receive that uh, host packet that I mailed you? Yes, I did. Fantastic. Is this a good time where we could spend a few minutes just talking about some of the things in it? Yes, I have just a few minutes. Okay, do you have it with you? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Give me the perk. Give me it. I got it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so the first thing that I have to say is thank you for inviting me into your home and inviting your friends over. We're going to have a great time just like we did at Susie's house. And you know what? Remind me, what was the reason that you decided to have a show? Wasn't it like a, a product that you wanted to get, right? Yes, the Rock Croc. Oh my gosh, I love the Rock Croc. You know, and it's a great reason to have a show because it's always best to get those types of things for free, right? Yes. Awesome. Well, since we're going to uh, be earning you the Rock Croc and lots of other things for free, I've got a great idea. Why don't we make a recipe in the rock crock so we can show all of your friends how amazing it is. Does okay, that sound good? Yeah. Awesome. So um, as you've gone through that packet, have you found anything else in the catalog yet that you're interested in? Lots. <laughs> well, in the, uh, in the packet, there is a party planner. Um, you'll see it, it says, let's plan your party. And we're gonna use this because I want you to make sure there's a catalog in there too. I want you to make sure that you're dog-earing the pages, circle the items in the catalog that you want, because I want to know what's on your wish list when I come to your house, okay? Sure. Awesome. All right. I know that when I hosted a party, I wanted just about everything in the catalog, and the good news is, is with a successful party, we're going to be able to get you everything that you want. Okay. So I need you to do um, just a couple things for me to make it a successful show. Can you do that for me? What are they? Okay. Well, first of all, on the right-hand side of that where it says, let's plan your party, it says guests. And I'm going to need you to make a guest list. And there's a very easy way to know who you should invite. 
I need you to invite everyone you know who eats. That's a lot of people. I know a lot of people who do that. Well, I really mean everyone who eats. We all, re we all eat, right? Yep. Okay, there's no one we can think of who doesn't need a little bit of Pampered Chef because we've all got to be able to prepare food. All right, have you started your list yet? No. Okay, well I will tell you that what we need on that list is 45 names. Now that may seem like a lot of people. Does that seem like a lot of people to you? Yeah. Okay, well the reason we need 45 names is because about a third of the people that you invite are gonna be able to make it to your party. So over the next couple weeks, you're gonna run into folks that we're gonna send those invitations out to. But if you'll do me a favor, I'm gonna email you a flyer that you'll be able to, can you print some of those out for, for me? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna email you, and I want you to have some of those on hand because not only are we gonna send a bunch of invitations out, but I want you to have something to hand them to remind them about your party uh, as you come across people. Does that sound good? Sure. Perfect. Really quick, are you on Facebook? Uh, yeah. Okay, well I just have to ask. Am you know, I not on are. Facebook would be the question. <laughs> okay, so I am too. And I'm gonna tell you that a lot of people are kind of prone to use Facebook as a way to invite people to things. And after 800 shows, we will both be disappointed if Facebook is how you're gonna invite people to the party, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to The you. invitations that I'm going to send out means that your friends are going to get a personal piece of mail um, and inviting them to the show, and it's the best way to invite your friends. But Once, Michael, it's easier to use Facebook. My friends, they, they're all on there. I understand that it's easier, Lisa, but it's also easier to ignore invitations on Facebook. You know? I guess. Do you get invited to a lot of things on Facebook? Yes. Do you pay attention to those invitations? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's true of your friends, true, too, okay? Yes. All right, so we're going to mail those invitations out. I also have a system that's going to allow you to um, enter your friend's information, and it will send out texts for you and emails as well. So we can make sure that nobody is missed on your guest list. All right, so once you get your friends to the party, I'm going to make sure that I tell them all about our amazing products. And I promise you that if you stay excited about this party, your friends are gonna be excited about this party. I need you to keep track of who's coming, so when you start hearing from folks, make sure you, you make a list. Within about 48 hours of your show, I need reminders to go to everybody. So we can do this one of two ways. You can be in charge of that, or you can use my system, go in, put in everybody's cell number, and. I'll do that reminder for you, but it'll look like it's coming from you. Does that sound good? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Everybody's busy these days, and I don't know about you, but I love those phone calls that I get from the doctor in the dentist's office reminding me about my appointments. So this is our way we're going to make sure they're reminded. All right. So you can't skip anybody. We've got to make sure that everybody gets on the invite list and everybody gets a reminder. The... Um, Oh, sorry. No one wants to host a party with only two or three guests. And the way that we're going to make sure that we've got a house full of people or that 15 um, folks in attendance is all of the ways we're going to inv invite them. So let's face it, you're also going to hear no from, from some people. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't want to order. There's extra catalogs and order forms in your packet. Did you see those? Yes, I did. And there's a quick little cheat sheet on how to take orders and figure totals. Did you have any questions about that? I didn't look at it yet, but I'll let you know if I do. Perfect. All right. There's also a link to shop online. That's included, and I'll also email that to you. All right. So, oh, I forgot to say about outside orders. Make sure you tell everyone, no matter where they live in the United States, that you're having a Pampered Chef party because our average order only costs $2 more to ship directly to their door. Oh, I like that. Yeah. No, um, I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can also more. have any of your friends that you don't want to have to deliver to just pay an extra $2 at your show and it'll like uh, ship right to that them as well. Good to me. 
All right. So on the back side of your party planner that we were talking about shows your host rewards on the left-hand side. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Perfect. I want to talk about where it says the $1,000 show. Just so you know, my average host does reach the $1,000 level, and there's a really easy way to make sure that that happens. The, the quickest way is for your, you're going to have probably about $200 in outside orders by the time we get to your show because all those people that are going to tell you no, that they can't make it, they've got a conflict, lots of them are going to need to place an outside order because they've, everybody needs a little bit of Pampered Chef. So when you collect about five outside orders, you're going to have about 200 ahead of time. We'll get that 15 people to your show, and in the end, that's almost always a formula for a $1,000 show for me. Okay? Sure. All right. The good news is, is if you look at where it says $1,000 show, it says we're going to get you $215 in free products, five half-priced items, an, a host special item at 60% off, and an unlimited shopping spree of 30% off. So right now, the main thing is, is I need you to focus on getting people to your party. Um, I'll arrive about 30 minutes beforehand. I'm going to set up everything. I'll bring all of my tools. I'll send you a grocery list a couple of days before your show so you can have all the ingredients for me. We can chat as much as we want um, between now and then. You're welcome to text me as well. And that last check-in is going to be 48 hours ahead of time when, you've made, when we've made those reminders so I can get that final head count. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, uh, do I need to give you a table? Actually, yes, I will need a table um, if wherever we're going to be in your house. If it's not like in the kitchen, uh, I will need a table or I can operate on a kitchen table or if you have an island or something like that. Okay. All right. That's good. So, Lisa, again, thank you so much for inviting me into your home. I'm really looking forward to your party. We are going to have fun and make a yummy recipe in that rock crock. If you need me, give me a call, okay? Sure thing, Michael. Thank you. All right. You. Thanks. Bye-bye. So, and that's pretty much how my first call would go. Um, that is the last thing that I had. Okay, so we want to do a quick, uh, is that back on? I want to do a quick live host coaching call with the first person that can get up here and do it with me and be the um, ho uh, host. Who wants to do it? person to get up okay so what I want you to do is I want you to give have we ever met before today have we ever met before today no we have not I thought I was already in the host role play okay sorry I just want to prove to the audience this was not prearranged clearly New York so we're gonna go we're gonna go back to back but I want you to um, Give me any scenario you want. However, we've been in the room where we've overheard role play where people make it disgustingly difficult. Like, I don't want to hear your goat ate your invitations. I don't want to hear anything. Like, we don't, we want, if you want to give me an obstacle or an objection, I want you to give it to me in the ones that we hear normally. All right, so don't give me something that's happened once in 2,000 shows. Are we getting the point? Give me something that the majority of this room has heard or will hear if they're new in their career. Because if you're new, you're going to get the objections and the interference, all right? So um, again, whether it's in person or over the phone, the f I want the host to know the sound of my voice. So let's pretend you never heard my voice before and I'm calling you. What's your name? I'm sorry. Oh, lovely. <laughs> uh, hi, is Prudential there? Prudencia. Hi, it's Lisa from the Pamper Chef. Is this a bad time? Um, I've, got, I've got a few minutes before I have to run out the door. Awesome. I just want to take a few minutes to help you plan for a successful show. Can I ask you one question? Sure. Are you comfortable having about 15 people in our home for your demo? Um, sort of. How about about 10? Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, say it again. Um, yes, how about 10? Okay, that sounds like a great number, but let me ask you, what makes you uncomfortable with 15? It just seems like a lot of people from my home. Okay, what kind of home do you have? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I've got a, a small front room, a small dining room, you know, so that's what I'm concerned about. Okay, have you ever hosted a holiday or a birthday party in your home? Yes. About how many people do you think you had? Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> probably about 20 or 25. <laughs> yeah. All right, Prudential, we're going to Geico. Okay, so you can see that in a situation like that, you've had other holidays and events, and I'm sure that if you, you, know, if you have the average American home, 15 isn't really a stretch, okay? So the way to get that is a very simple formula. Would you like to know what it is? Sure. I gave you 40 invitations in your host packet. I'm going to send you some personalized labels for those postcards so that you don't have to fill out the left side. But if you send out all 40 of those cards, less than half will actually show up giving us the 15. How do you feel about that? Well, that, that makes me feel better because I was thinking about 40 people. It wasn't coming to me, but. No, if 40 people show up at your house because you've invited 40, I will give you my car, my kit, and my kids. <laughs> They're big now, they can be very helpful. So you think you're good with the 40 invites? Okay, if for any reason you stop short of 40, would you let me know? Because you certainly wouldn't be the first host that that has happened to, but I'd like to give you some tips that other successful hosts have done. I'm thinking about the 2025 that usually come to birthday parties or what, so. So we went from 10 to 25. I love that, so you know, you know. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is outside orders. The first five people that call you are the people that cannot come. So when you have at least five outside orders, it's going to dramatically change your show total. Prudencia, Laya. Prudencia. It's going to dramatically change your show total. I don't think I've ever closed a show with less than five. If you want to get more, great. You'll be on my Hostess Hall of Fame wall. But I've never closed a show with less than five. Are you comfortable reaching out to people to see what they would like? Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to whip out Michael's fancy line. You know, we've designed a new shipping plan that it's only going to cost the average order a, a $2 more to go right to their door. How crazy is that? Does it mean I don't have to deal with it? Nope. Don't be afraid to reach out to any relatives. You have relatives out of state? I do. So reach out to everyone. Okay, the last thing I want to ask you, and it may be the furthest thing from your mind right now, you're probably like, she's cuckoo. Have you ever thought about becoming a Pamper Chef consultant? No. No. Is that no, not now? No, not ever? No, I don't know what you're talking about? Well, you do such a fabulous job. There's no way I could get up and talk in front of people and do what you do. Let me ask you a question. If it weren't for that fear, would it be something you would take a, a look into? Yeah, because it looks fun, but it just scares me to have to know all this stuff. I don't know everything about all the products. Um, what I'm looking for right now is curiosity. So the fears are natural and normal. But if we could get over those, it could it be something you could see yourself doing? Maybe. Okay. The reason why I bring it up is it's actually part of your host benefit package to start with an advantage over others. So I would not be doing my job if I did not offer this to you as my host. But here's a fun fact. 70% of this company is made up of consultants that hosted shows first. And you certainly wouldn't be the first host, uh, the first consultant to sign up with things on your mind about how well you would do at the job. So I gave you some information in your host packet. For right now, I just want you to take a look at it and write down any questions you may have. Would that be all right? Wonderful. Now after today, I'm gonna really contact you, your preferred method of contact. What would that look like for you? Email, phone, or text? Phone, please. You want me to call you? Because you want to hear me say Prudencia? Yeah, well, no. <laughs> because if you text me, you might not spell it right. <laughs> Everybody's a comedian. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check back with you in a couple of days on the invitations. And if you have any questions, of course, reach out to me. You know, feel free to reach out to me in any way you, know, you want. Okay. Hi, Prudencia, it's Lisa from the Pamper Chef. Did I catch you at a bad time? Always say bad time. And if you get them mixed up, it's in the alphabet. B comes before G. Don't ask, is this a good time? Because you'll always get? No. Did I catch you at a bad time? No. Do you 
want them to say no, let them say no to that, right? Did I catch you at a bad time? No. Awesome. I'm not going to take up much time. I just wanted to check on your invitations. Have they gone out? Uh, yes. Uh, how many? <laughs> I'm just playing. So, okay. It, yes, they've gone out. Wonderful. How many were you able to send? 25. Awesome. Prudencia, that's a wonderful start. But what made you stop at 25? Because that's how many people I want in my house, remember? Okay. <laughs> okay. You want 25 to attend? Oh, that's right. I needed less, right? <laughs> Remember what we spoke about in the first call? Less than half of who you invite will actually show up. So when we talk about 25, I mean, if that's the max, if that's the most you can do, and we've gone over every, er every area of inviting, then that, that would be great. That would be about eight guests. But can you send out the rest of the cards? Yeah, I kind of ran out of who I know, you know, people to think of sending. Prudencia, I'm so glad you shared that with me because you certainly wouldn't be the first. Would you like to hear what others have done with the leftover cards that they couldn't fill out? Okay. Looking at your list of invited guests, who, is your, who are you closest with? Uh, Kathy, Mary, Sue. Okay. So Kathy, Mary, Sue, are they friends, relatives? Uh, one relative and two friends. Okay. So let's just go with Kathy. If, if you reached out to Kathy today, um, how do you think she'd react if you asked her to co-host with you? I think she'd like it. Okay. okay, so how long do you think it'll take for you to reach out to Kathy and let me know if she's a green light or not? I could find out by tonight. Okay, so I'm going to check back with you later. All right? Okay. All right. And I'm done talking to, I'm done talking to her right then and there because I, I don't want to go any further until I hear what Kathy says. Okay? When she comes back to me and says Kathy's willing to do that, I'm going to say Prudencia. I wasn't going to say this to you earlier, but the people that host coach, I mean, the people that co-host, they have better shows than anybody else. Tone and pitch of your voice. Act like, act like, you know, you've got that secret. And she's in on it now. And you tell her, I will not say that in front of anybody, so don't call me on that. I'm not going to divulge that. Um, okay, so... You're good with, where did we leave off? She's going to say, uh, next day. How did Kathy react to you uh, asking her to co-host? Uh, she wants to do it with you. Yay! Okay, so how can we get those 15 cards over to Kathy? Oh, we don't live far from each other. I can just walk them over to her. Do you feel comfortable giving me a way to reach out to her after she's gotten these cards in her hand? I think she'd be all right with it, yeah. What do you think is the preferred method of contact? Would she prefer I call, text, or email? Email. So do you feel comfortable giving me her email address? And I promise you I'm just going to be reaching out to offer her the same help with the cards as I did with you. Um, yeah, I'll just, when I walk over the invites, is it okay if I ask her and get back to you? Absolutely. Okay. The words, do you feel comfortable giving me away? Do you feel comfortable giving me your information? Do you feel comfortable giving me your sister's information? Do you feel comfortable giving me a way to stay in touch with this person? Using those words, do you feel comfortable, is very non-abrasive, and that works in any situation. You could be out and about and meet somebody at a store because they saw your bag, and you're giving them a catalog. Do you feel comfortable giving me a way to stay in touch with you? Not, can I have your phone number? Why don't you write your phone number down right here for me on my bag? <laughs> Put it on my shoulder, right there. When you ask for something, it's a little, you know, if somebody says to you, can I have your information? No. Are you comfortable giving me a way to stay in touch lets people believe that you're not interested in the stalking business because you're giving them a choice. Okay. My main thing is to get those 40 invitations out or as close to it as humanly possible. When we get to a show and there are five people there, three people there, that's fine. But ask yourself, did I go over every possible way that this host could have filled her room. And if that's the case, then those three to five people get the best show you have ever given. But if there's three to five people sitting there and you say to yourself, I had an opportunity to make sure she would do all 40 and I didn't do it because I chickened out, then that's on us. Remember, if you were in Rory Vaden yesterday, he said, put all of your work up front Put all your investment in that show up front. Be very thorough in the front of the show because the rest of it will kind of take care of itself. You fill that room, not much can go wrong. 
and I'm not and I'm not saying that lovely parties can't come out of three to five guests. Some of us have had amazing shows with a handful of guests because it's more intimate. But that is the exception, not the norm. You want to fill the room. Anybody have any questions? Now, here, here's the thing between Michael and I, and this is why we are supposed to be opposite in contrast to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for Prudentia's <laughs> help. I'm not going to spell it. But the reason is some people love one way and some people love the other way. The idea is not to walk out of here sounding like me or not to walk out of here sounding like Michael. If he said something that sparked it, that's what you fly with. If I said something that sparked, with it, sparked it, that's what you fly with. It's not about not being you, but if you don't have the right personality to sound enthusiastic and energetic, you need to find another personality. Just get them excited. I would mind being on my knees at a coffee table, but you're young. <laughs> I don't want to be on my... <laughs> I would ask them, if you're comfortable having more guests than your home would allow, is there anybody else that would be willing to open up their home for you? If you've seen a one bedroom in New York City, I couldn't stand in it and turn around full circle, but a one bedroom somewhere else might be huge. But again, does the size of your home intimidate you? Like if you could have it elsewhere and have more people, would you be open to that idea? Well, yeah. Well, would your mom or, or your friend you know, be willing to open their home. But if, if, if you think about it, get them thinking about the last thing they hosted. How many people? You heard Prudencia say, oh, I had 25 people here. Well, duh. Right? But five minutes before that, she only wanted 10. Get them thinking about the last thing they hosted. It's about personalizing it and, and, and helping them with their issue, not generalizing. Maybe you should line up, I guess. I, 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 yeah, because that would make it fair, because you're all raising your hands, and I'm in menopause, and I don't know that. Just curious, last year the big push was to go to station-style shows, so I have switched all of my shows to station-style. Are you guys doing station-style for your huge shows, or the, the, oh, the demo? Absolutely not. No station-style for me. I like control. No, it, you, you know, you have to be flexible. You do. You have to be open to new ideas. And if you see the crowd's not going to pay attention anyway, you know, might as well let them have the fun. Hey, really quick, I know people are starting to leave because we're over on time, but Lisa Noto, Michael Yokely, you're going to get a survey. Lisa Noto, Michael Yokely. And like she said, extraordinary is one word. <laughs> okay, uh, two quick questions. When you do the co-hosting, are they splitting the host benefits then? Co-hosting, they do have to split the host benefits, but rarely do they even ask me about that. When people come up to me and say, can we co-host? When they offer that, then I'll say, sure. Oh, so what do we do? We split the stuff? Yeah. So if they're asking it, I tell them. I don't bring it up if they don't ask. Um, secondly, if they have an objection of too small of a space, do you ever then suggest a Facebook show, virtual party, or something other than the live I never give up on a live show until it absolutely is the end of the road. Never. The audio guy's taking away the microphone. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Have a great conference.